The following bar graph shows the percentage breakup of a person's salary from year 2001 to 2005. With the given information, answer the following questions. Right, so there is a bar graph given to us which shows, see understand, when you, whenever it comes to data interpretation, it is very important for you to understand the given data first. Don't jump to the questions directly, right? Don't be in a hurry to solve the questions. First, get to know what exactly can be, you know, extracted from the given graph right what values what type of values can be calculated once you are clear with the data then proceed to the questions so here the following bar graph shows what percentage breakup percentage breakup of a person's salary from the year 2001 to 2005 so you can see there are five bars given here right 2001 to 2005 right 2001 2 3 4 5 and it shows the percentage breakup of a person's salary so whatever be the person's salary in the year 2005, 2001, the breakup of that salary in terms of percentage is given to us. And you can see the same bar has got three sections here, three parts here. So the first one is 38%, then we have 22% and 40%. You're getting it? What are the meanings of these colors here, different colors used here? You see, orange shows transport expense, this dark blue here shows EMI expense and the lighter one shows savings. So we can say that in the year 2001, the person has spent 40% of his salary on transport expenses, right? 40% on transport expenses. He has spent about 22% on EMI expense, 22% on EMI expense and the remaining 38% on savings. Remaining 38% are his savings. Yes or no? So if you if you actually observe, this should add up to 100, right? So 38 plus 22 is 60%, 60% plus 40% is 100%, right? Every bar, if you see from 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, everything is maximum up to 100%, each, right? So out of the 100% salary, the breakup between transport expense, EMI expense and savings is given to us. What is funny here is this person does not have any food or any other expenses. I don't understand that part, but anyway, neglecting all those commonly known in facts, we got we got to answer the question. So only three expenses, transport expense, EMI expense and savings. So 2001, the breakup is given. Similarly, the breakup for the remaining years is also given to us. Like if you see 2004, he had, he had spent 20% of his salary, 20% of his salary on transport expenses, 22% on EMI and the rest, which is 58% were his savings. And so is the case for remaining years as well. So very simple data. All we can find out from this is the percentage expenditure on a given item which can be transport or EMI or savings all right let's now look at the questions so here's the first question right so from for the same data see what the question is if the ratio on savings in the year 2002 and 2005 is 7 is to 5 what ratio savings ratio which years 2002 and 2005 how much is it 7 is to 5 so the ratio on savings in 2002 and 2005 in 2002 and 2005 is 7 is to 5 see savings we know is this light blue in color right so in 2002 the ratio uh, the expenditure on savings or the percentage of savings was 42 percent right 42 percent of the uh, salary was saved and that in the year 2005 was 30 percent 30 percent of the salary was saved so basically the ratio of these two is equal to 7 is to 5. Then what is the ratio of EMI expenses in the year 2002 and 2005? We got to find out the ratio of EMI expenses for 2002 and 2005. Now easy to do. What do we? What, what can we do here? See, let us assume the salary in 2002 is S and that in 2005 is S dash. You actually don't have to do all this drama in the exam, but for the sake of clear explanation, I'm writing all these steps in detail, right? I mean, if you are smart, you can start doing the calculations mentally without having to put pen on paper. However, for the sake of clear understanding, let's assume salary in 2002 is S and that in 2005 is S dash. Now, what ratio is given to us? Savings ratio. So, can I say 42% of S upon 30% of S dash is equal to 7 is to 5? 42% of 2002 salary, 30% of 2005 salary is 7 is to 5. Now try and simplify this, what happens, see percentage anyway gets cancelled. Percentages anyway get cancelled by 100 and by 100. The 7 here goes 6 times, 5 also goes 6 times and 6 and 6 also gets cancelled. So finally, what do we get to know? S by S dash is equal to 1 by 1, 1 is to 1 or it means S is equal to S dash. So basically the salary in these two years was equal. The salary in 2002 is equal to the salary in 2005. Now, what is he asking us to find out? EMI expenses. EMI expenses for the same two years. How much did he spend on EMI in 2002? 40%. 40% of what? S divided by. 
How much did he spend on EMI in 2005? 35%. 35% of what? 35% of S dash. But since S and S dash are equal, will these two get cancelled? Yes, it will get cancelled. Percentage anyway makes no sense here because it's a common uh, factor. So it can be cancelled in numerator and denominator. What are we left with? 40 by 35. Can 40 by 35 be taken as 8 by 7? Yes. 40 by 35 is 8 by 7. 8 fives and 7 fives. So 8 is to 7. Option 3 is the answer. However, having done all this, let me tell you that a lot of these steps can be cut down. You don't have to put every step on paper. Avoid putting all the steps on paper, right? Cut down the number of steps so that you arrive at the answer much faster. Okay, the more you write on paper, the more time it takes. Anyway, the answer is option 3, 8 is to 7. Let me present the next question to you all. So look at the next one here. What does it say? If the saving in 2002 is 3 fifth of the saving in 2004, then what is the total expenditure on transport in 2002? Given that the total expense in 2004 is rupees 1,75,000, right? So let's try and decipher this now, right? First of all, frame the equations like I've said, right? Savings in 2002 is 3 fifth of savings in 2004. Now, what is the saving in 2002? 42%. What is the saving in 2004? 58%. So basically, again, let's assume salaries are S and S dash, right? So 42% of S saving in 2002 is it is equal to 3 fifth of 3 by 5 of saving in 2004 what is the saving in 2004 58 percent of s dash 58 percent of s dash 42 percent of s equals 3 fifth of 58 percent of s dash this is savings in 2002 and here's the saving in 2004 now from this what do we get we get to know the ratio of s versus s dash right we can find out the ratio of s and s dash right salary ratio can be obtained then he's asking us to find out what? He says, find out what is the total expenditure on transport in 2002. What is the total expenditure on transport in 2002? 18%. So basically the question says, find out what is 18% of S. 18% of S is equal to what is the question? 18% of S equals to what is the question? Given that the total expense in 2004 is 1,75,000. Total expense in 2004 is 1,75,000. Now, I know that in a hurry, most of you would assume that 1,75,000 given here is S dash. Because the total of 2004, total of 2004 is S dash. And that is 1,75,000. But that is why you have got the wrong answer. Understand, it is not the total salary of 2004. Remember that the graph here talks about the breakup of a person's salary. So here we are talking about the total salary. But what is 1,75,000? 1,75,000 is the total expense. Is the total expense of 2004. Given that the total expense in 2004 is 1,75,000. You understand the difference? So basically if you look at the components given here. Which are transport expense, EMI expense and savings. What are expenses? Only transport and EMI are expenses. Saving is not an expense. So when he says 1,75,000 is the total expense for 2004, it does not mean that 100% of 2004 is 1,75,000. It is only these two expenses. What expenses? Transport expense, which is 20% and EMI expense, which is 22%. Are you able to follow? So don't take 100% of S dash equals to 1,75,000. It is only 20 plus 22. 20% plus 22% which is equal to 42% 42% of what s dash 42% of s dash is equal to 1,75,000 That is it. I think now that the question is done now now that the equations have been framed You can solve the question very easily. All we need to do is find out s dash from this We know that 20% plus 22% is 42% 42% of s dash is 1,75,000 Can you get s dash from this? Yes, you get s dash from this. Can you substitute that s dash here? Yes, you can substitute it here and then you'll get s once you get s can you find out 18% of s? Yes See calculations are involved. I don't say that there are no calculations. You got to do those calculations, but then What is important is did you understand the question properly? I'm sure a lot of you have gone wrong misunderstood that this is the total salary for the year 2004 it is not 1,75,000 is not the total salary 1,75,000 is the total expense of the year 2004 total expense of the year 2004 you understand total expense of 2004 and total expense here means the transport expense and the EMI expense but not the savings right I think calculation is your lookout you can do it yourself I can just 
maybe help you with you know uh, you, can, you can cut down a few steps like for example don't actually worry about percentages both the sides here are percentages right symbols get cancelled by 100 and by 100 now from this we can say s dash is equal to 1 lakh 75,000 into 100 upon 42 right 42 percent of s dash is this so s dash is equal to 1 lakh 75,000 into 100 upon 42 or if you are you know strong in your calculations if you would directly like to find out s dash from that you you can do that as well Right, I mean, 42% is 1,75,000. So what is 100% basically? 100% will be S dash. So calculate S dash, substitute it here, right? So from this, we can say S is equal to 3 by 5 into 58. 3 by 5 into 58 into S dash. Now, what is this S dash? We've just calculated. 1,75,000 into 100 upon 42. And remember, this, this 42 also will come here, all right? 42% of S, 42 into S is 3 by 5 into 58 into S dash. So S will be 3 by 5 into 58 by 42 of S dash. And S dash is 1,75,000 into upon 42. Okay. Now, again, this is not the actual requirement. The actual requirement is only 18% of this. Right. So if S is this, 18% of that. So I'll just change it here itself. In the exam also, you got to do this, right? Don't, don't waste your time in calculating S. Directly calculate 18% of S. So 18%. If it is 18%, what do we do? Multiply this with 18 by 100. This is the final answer. Simplification is your lookout. You, you have to do it yourself. But yeah, just simplify that and you get the answer. Like hundreds. See, the advantage of writing everything first and then doing the simplification is a lot of things would get cancelled. Right? If you are not considered 18% immediately, you would have multiplied with 100. And then you will be dividing by 100 at a later stage. Makes no sense, right? First multiplying with x, then dividing by x is only uh, increasing the number of steps. Anyway, you got to do the simplification, right? 3 by 5 into 58 into 175000 into 18 by 42 squared. Simplify that and you will get the final answer, which is not going to be any of these, right? 1, 2, 3 or 4. I mean, if you can just look at the range of it, you would understand, right? So do the final simplification, answer will be option 5, none of these. Answer would be option 5, none of this. I hope all of you have followed this. So the key here was understand the question properly, right? It is the total expense for the year 2004, which comes out to be only 42% and not 100%. So I hope all of you have followed option 5, none of this will be the final answer. You got to the simplifications yourself and, and try to do a smart calculation. I mean, don't try to find out the exact answer. Just try and see if the answer can be in the given ranges. Like here, if you actually look at my calculation, I am not try, not interested in finding out what the correct answer is. I am trying to look at if the first four options are right. And somehow I sense that 31,000, 26,000, 21,000 and 15,000 are out of ranges, right? Out of the range. So if these four are out of the range, the answer has to be option five, none of this. Okay, let's move to the next one. I'll leave the calculation to you. Let's move to the next question. So here's the next one. See what it says. If every year there is an increase of 100% in monthly salary as compared to previous year's monthly salary, then what is the ratio of monthly salary in 2005 to the expenses on transport in 2003? Right? So basically every year there is an increase of 100% in monthly salary. Increase of 100% in the monthly salary as compared to previous year's monthly salary. You, you understand what is increase of 100% means, right? Double. The salary gets doubled, right? 100% increase means what? Anything that has increased by 100% means what? It has got doubled. So every year, there is an increase of 100% in monthly salary as compared to the previous year's monthly salary. I wish we all find such companies where such an increase is given every year, right? Increase of 100%. Your salary just gets doubled every year. And it's obvious that if the monthly salary is doubled, the yearly salary also gets doubled, right? If your monthly salary is getting doubled, yearly salary also gets doubled, right? No, no doubts about that. Then what is the ratio of monthly salary in 2005, the monthly salary in 2005 to the expenses on transport in 2003? Expenses on transport in 2003. So if you've got to find a ratio here, ratio of the monthly salary of 2005 versus the transport expenses of 2003. Okay, so let's try and work on this. See, since it is about a ratio, or if, even if it is about like percentages, we can always assume that the, the salary in 2003 is like 100 rupees. We can start with that assumption. Basically, what would happen? Let's say the salary in 2003 is S. What will happen to the salary in 2004? It will become 2S. It doubles, right? And what happens in 2005? This becomes 4S. 
So S becomes 2S, 2S becomes 4S, right? It doubles it into 2 into 2, S into 2, 2S, 2S into 2, 4S. So what was S in 2003 will become 4S in 2005 based on the given rate of increment, right? 100 percentage increase every year. Let's assume S is the monthly salary, by the way, right? See, you have to be very clear about monthly salary and yearly salary here. He's asking us to find out the ratio of monthly salary of 2005, the monthly salary of 2005 to the expenses on transport in 2003, expenses on transport in 2003. So you can either take S2, S4, S or you can also say salary in 2003 is 100. So that in 2004 will become 200 and in 2005 it will become 400. That also can be done. You can start with some random value, preferably 100. But you can also take it 95 if you want or 97 if you like 97 number, right? 97, 97 into 2, you know, 194 and then 194 into 2, right? 388 would be the values there. Anyway, so, you know, we know this, this is how the salaries would undergo a change. Now, so we are assuming that these are monthly salaries, by the way. S is the monthly salary, let's assume. Right? Monthly salary. S to S, 4S. S to S, 4S. Now, ratio of monthly salary in 2005. Now, what is the monthly salary in 2005? Monthly salary in 2005 is 4S. So, let me, let me just put it here for the sake of clear explanation. Monthly salary of 2005 is to transport expense of 2003. Transport expense of 2003. What is the monthly salary of 2005? See, monthly salary of 2005 is 4S. So, 4S as it is, is to transport expense of 2003. Now, he has asked us to find out the transport expenses in 2003. Transport expenses in 2003 means what? The total transport expenses for the year. How much is the transport expense for the year? Uh, uh, percentage in terms of percentage? 50%. So, transport expense in that year is actually 50%. 50% of what? S. But S is the monthly salary. He is asking us to find out for the year. So, should we not multiply this by 12? Yes, we should multiply this by 12. You getting it? Monthly salary in 2005, 4S as it is. The monthly salary in 2003 is S. So, transport expenses will be 50% of S. But 50% of S is the per month transport expenses. He is asking us to find out the expenses of transport in 2003, which means for the entire year. And for the entire year, you have to just multiply by 12. Whatever is monthly, multiply by 12 to get the yearly value. So, 50% of S multiplied by 12. Or you can also do it the other way. If the monthly salary is S, yearly salary would be 12S. Yearly salary is 12S. And transport expense is 50% of yearly salary. So, 50% of 12S. Which doesn't make any difference. Final answer would come out to be the same. So, what happens? S and S anyway gets cancelled. This 50% is like 1 by 2. Right? It is like 1 by 2. 50%. And this 2 here goes 6 times. So, basically 4 is to 6. Or which can be further simplified as... 2 is to 3. 2 is to 3 is the final answer, which is option 5 in none of these. So, all those who have got 8 is to 1 is the answer. I know why do we get 8 is to 1 here. Because you did not consider this word monthly. You have considered the yearly salary for the year 2005. And that gives you 8 is to 1 is the answer. You are all wrong. Silly mistake, right? 8 is to 1 or 1 is to 8 are not the answers. Of course, option 3, option 4 also wrong. The correct answer is none of this. And in terms of absolute value, the ratio here is 2 is to 1, right? 2 is to 1. Sorry, 2 is to 3. Monthly salary in 2005 versus the transport expense of 2003 will be 2 is to 3. I hope all of you have followed this. So, I think af after having discussed these three questions, uh, the conclusion is you have to pay attention to you know, the question there, right? In a hurry, you end up getting wrong answers. Like in this question, looks like most of you did not Pay attention to the word monthly. He was asking us to find out the monthly salary of 2005. And similarly in the previous question also. Uh, in the previous question also if you look at it. Most of you did not focus on the word expense. It was the total expense of the year 2004. Right? 1,75,000. It was not the total salary of the year 2004. Getting it?